Hello, viewers. Welcome to Edge Wellness, where you learn proving ways to help to live in. This is your lady, Salome. Today, I'm very excited. I have a colleague with me, Salma Tayebi. Salma is a functional nutrition counselor. She's also a yoga instructor. She's also certified by the Institute of Integrative Nutrition. So she uses nutrition and yoga breathing techniques and you know other lifestyle changes to help her clients. She's very passionate about what she do. Because of that, Selma teaches yoga via Zoom and also on her lawn, just to make sure that people are breathing right. This is her passion, especially when it comes to breathing, because most of the time we talk about eating right and all stuff, but something as simple and free as breathing, we are not concentrating. Because of that, today she's here to share her wisdom on deep breathing to reduce stress in your life. I want you to stay tuned to the end because Salma is going to show us four techniques how to, you could immediately de-stress when you find yourself in stress. Salma, welcome to Azure Wellness. Thank you, Salome. So good to be here. Beautiful. So Selma, you know, breathing is not my area. I know you're the yoga lady. You love this area. I know you're passionate about it. Anytime I talk to you, like I can feel the vibes when you're talking about breathing because it's something simple, but we are not paying attention to it. And I know today you want to draw viewers attention to that. So my question to you is, you know, we don't even think about it and we breathe. So if breathing is that automatic, why do we have to concentrate on it anyway? Very good question. Um, and well, most people don't realize that breathing can actually be used as a tool to um, switch yourself from an anxious state to a relaxed state. Um, you can be more focused and have more oxygen going to your brain when you learn how to breathe right. Okay. Um, I'd also like to say that Mark Hyman, I love this quote, it says, Deep breathing is one easy, accessible practice that can help to balance the mind and body and reduce the stress response. If you feel stressed today, take a few minutes to take a few slow breaths today and see how you feel. So this is Dr. Mark Hyman, um, yeah. who I follow and um, respect a lot. And, you know, he's a functional nutrition guy yeah. talking about breathing. So the thing to understand is breath is primary source of nutrition people don't realize that um also i'd like to explain to you exactly how that works um your nervous system uh starts you start with the central nervous system is your brain and your spinal cord okay so that's your central nervous system then you have a peripheral nervous system which is not the central nervous system. So everything else is the peripheral nervous system. Okay. Periphery, going through your body, through your um, organs, etc. the nerves. Uh, within this now peripheral nervous system, um, you have an autonomic nervous system, which is the involuntary part of it. Um, and that's why it's called autonomic. Um, and that's very interesting because your body does all this heart rate regulation, blood pressure regulation, respiration, digestion, even sexual arousal. All of that is part of the autonomic nervous system. Amazing. And the cool thing is that our body is so amazing. Uh, it's doing all this on its own, but it's giving you a little clue there. You can actually use your breath to control whether your body is going to stay in a relaxed state or an anxious state. Okay. So in the autonomic nervous system, I've had sympathetic and parasympathetic. You want to go a little bit into that and when it comes to breathing. Sure. Sure. So that's a great question. So your autonomic nervous system is divided into three parts, but the two major parts is, sympathetic ner nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system. Okay. They're actually named like that because they're like on a, um, what do you spectrum. call it? A spectrum. 
you know. And uh, so the parasympathetic nervous system is on one side and sympathetic is on one side. The sympathetic response is your flight and fr fright response. So if you were in a jungle and being ra ra you know, chased by a tiger, you're going to be running. Your heart is racing and all that blood is rushing into your muscles to allow you to quickly respond and climb up that tree, right? Yeah. So your, your body needs to have... So the blood is not rushing up to your brain. It's maximum amount of blood is going into your muscles to allow you to move. Whereas the parasympathetic nervous system on the other side of the spectrum is your rest and digest phase where all everything that you eat and uh, eat and assimilate, it actually absorbs into your body. So that's where your digestion is working. Okay. And that's where you're relaxed. So would you say that somebody in the sympathetic nervous phase is actually like anxious, correct? The anxiety Absolutely. phase. Yeah. Okay. And then when we are relaxed, we are in the para phase. Yeah. And, and the thing is that there's somewhere in between too, right? Okay. And, and also the other thing to know is nowadays there's a lot of stress. And when they say stress causes this and stress causes shingles and stress, what is it really? It's really, you're, you're not able to turn off that sympathetic state and go into the parasympathetic. And so breath is a tool, which I'm gonna teach you today, that you have that control. You can do it. You don't need to take the drugs right away for that. Beautiful. Wow, that is amazing. Viewers, or we are going to get right to the connects. <laughs> I can't wait to get to that spot <laughs> where we are learning it. All right, so Selma, my next question will be, what really happened when we take in the breath? So uh, when you take in, this is my favorite part, because I'm going to take you to the journey of that oxygen molecule that goes in from your nose okay. and hopefully from your nose. So that's the first thing I want to address is you do, do not want to do mouth breathing. So you seal your no mouth and breathe in from your nose because mouth breathing sometimes seems easier because there's more air going in. However, it causes dry mouth. It can it and the reason for all of the problems it can cause, it can cause infection in the throat, ears, your sinuses, your throat infection, believe it or not. And the reason is because your nose has cilia, which filters the air that goes in. And it has uh, your parasinuses that makes a nitric oxide, which is created all over your body, but it's also created in the sinuses to increase the size of your, your blood vessels so more oxygen can go in. So that's a very important um, thing. So basically the filtration, also the hydration, the, you know, this moist air going into your lungs and clean air going into your lungs. So it goes in from your nose into your pharynx, which is behind your nose, that area over there. And then it goes into your larynx, which is your through your voice box, and then your trachea, which is your windpipe, and then into your bronchioles, bronchioli, alveoli. So these are these are smaller and smaller. Simply said, I don't want to you know the technical part is all nice, fun to hear, but basically, it's amazing how small it goes down those little airways where they go and actually meet with the capillaries, with the blood that's coming from your, from your heart. And that's where the magic happened, where each blood cell gets enlightened with the oxygen. And then on their merry way, they go on. So then the blood, oxygenated blood then goes back into your right uh, atrium, into your right ventricle, and then it's pumped out of the aorta, the upper aorta to your upper side and lower aorta to your lower part of your body. But it doesn't end there. That blood, right, has to go all the way. So it goes to the tissues, to the organs, all the way down to the cells. And then when it gets to each cell, it goes into, it goes, it, 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 it the mitochondria is where the energy actually is created. So the food you've eaten, the glucose molecule, right? It's, it's the, that's the smallest particle of food. The glucose mar um, 
uh, the glucose and the oxygen combine, which is aer aerobic respiration, uh, which makes 38 energy molecules, ATP. Whereas if you had anaerobic respiration, it is four to six molecules. So that's where the light bulb went off in my head when I was yes. like, wow, this is the importance and relevance of oxygen. Definitely. And how do you get oxygen by breathing and mm -hmm. by drinking water too, right? Yes. You're 70% water, mm -hmm. but breathing is it's... everywhere. We and this is everywhere. amazing. This is amazing. The words, if you're taking a deep breath, you're making how many? 38, right? Energy molecules. And then if you're not breathing, you're making four and six. Please, let's take a minute to deep breath. <laughs> and Selma is going to show us some techniques in a few minutes. But we'll get there in a minute. So Selma, the next question is, um, when somebody breathes, breathing and anxiety, how does it affect it? It's... Um definitely a factor in increasing your anxiety when you don't breathe and it's a vicious cycle okay. so when you're anxious you're usually not thinking about anything but that problem at hand and many times you'd be holding your breath or doing really shallow breathing you yeah. know and uh, that reduces the oxygen level in your bloodstream so the extreme um, medical term for that is hypoxia. Okay. At that point, you don't say you're hypoxia because you're still getting a little breath, but you remember everything's on a spectrum. Yeah. So hypoxia is where you get no oxygen and your tissues basically die and you can, a, a human being can die in 10 minutes if they don't get oxygen and their brain cells and their muscles can die if it, they don't get oxygen in five minutes. So Circulation is so important and the oxygen in your bloodstream yeah. that you're bringing in from your breath is very, very important to nourish yeah. your blood yes. and your cells. Good. So some apart from anxiety, does breathing ha right have any effect on our mental health and the facility Absolutely. health? What are some other benefits, apart from we decreasing anxiety, from breathing right? Well, um, breathing right uh, reduces anxiety, obviously, but it also reduces physically um, your blood pressure can mm -hmm. go down, you know, reduce a high blood pressure. It can regulate your heartbeat, um, you know, so it's not very fast. It can lower the heartbeat is what I mean. Um, it is also, it can help increase your concentration and focus because there's more blood in your brain. It yeah. increases vitality. Yeah. Um, it can lower stress, obviously, which yeah. is related to anxiety and can help your migraines. There's you know, many, many advantages to breathing right. Okay. So now we got into the point where we are going to learn the breathing techniques to help decrease anxiety. So if you're feeling anxious right now and you're watching us, get ready and get breathing so that you could switch from one system to another system. All right, Salma, go for it. We are ready for the demonstration. Okay. Um, I want to tell you that when I do teach my yoga classes, I always talk to my students about taking yoga out into your real life. So off okay. the mat into your life. And what is yoga really? I'd like to talk a little about that and get into the breathing from there is yeah. there is no yoga without breathing. Yoga is breath. And um, by what I mean by that is that with every asana or posture we do, we say inhale and exhale. So there is no, you cannot do yoga without inhaling and exhaling. So basically you inhale when you expand and exhale when you contract. And um, it's beautiful because when you are in a little bit harder posture, you use your breath to get through your posture. And that be, starts becoming automatic in your life. And so when you're, when I'm living my life and I'm in a difficult situation, automatically I'm going to my breath. 
Okay. So I will show you some, uh, for initially I'm going to talk, talk to you about deep breath, breathing or diaphragmic breathing or complete yogic breath. Okay. Okay. So all of these are all one in the same. The complete yogic breath is a little, um, uh, I'm sh that's what I'm showing you today. So basically I would put my right hand on my chest mm -hmm. just so I'm aware of where my body is going in my left hand on my abdomen. And uh, just as a baby breathes or how you were breathing as a little child, um, where you feel the air going in and out and your abdomen expands and your abdomen goes in when you breathe in. Um, this is the correct way to breathe and also I just want you to notice your pets or your babies how they breathe so that's the correct way so as you inhale you would inhale deep into your abdomen okay and which is really where your diaphragm is right here so you feel your abdomen expand slightly and that's where it's going into your lower lungs part of your lungs so you have the lower lungs the middle lungs and your upper lungs so after, uh, at, without talking too much, I want to demonstrate it to you once. So I'm going to inhale. And then I inhale and then exhale. So the exhale, my, my abdomen was steady and it was steadily exhaling the breath out from the lower lungs to the middle lungs and then to the upper lungs. Lower lungs, when your abdomen expands, your middle lungs, you feel your actually, you feel your rib cage going out a little. And up here, you feel, you can in, envision the air going up into the clavicle and this whole area up here. So that's okay. deep breathing. And it's, you have to kind of focus on it and get, be, do it as a practice and do it maybe once a day or twice a day during, during your day, because you're not constantly deep breathing obviously yeah. but it becomes a habit of deeper breathing as you practice this a few times a day Great. and that's the point the point is you want deeper breathing um, okay so this is uh the complete yogic breath i just demonstrated okay Next, uh, i'd like to do a um something called block breath so you're using this deep breathing technique that I showed you, but you're doing some doing a block breath, which is the simplest way to lower your anxiety when you're slightly worked up and you know you're running around and you can't you know focus. Sit down and do like uh, ten rounds of block breathing. Okay. So that would be, you inhale for four, hold for two, exhale for four, hold for two inhale for four and you keep going so i'm going to talk you through this so okay. ground down on your seats uh-huh take a deep <laughs> breath in so deep breath one two three four hold one two exhale one two three four hold one two exhale i'm sorry was that inhale was that <laughs> excuse me you can't exhale twice but, no. <laughs> but basically inhale again. it's it's it, you let's do it one more time okay inhale one two three four hold two one two three four inhale one, two, three, four, hold for one, two, exhale. One, two, three, four, hold. One, two, inhale. One, two, three, four, hold. One, two, exhale. One, two, three, four. Amazing. <laughs> I hope you were able to follow that. Um, <laughs> that itself, it's called a block breath and it just equalizes your parasympathetic and sympathetic response and just makes you equal. 
you know, even keel. Yeah. Upeka. Upeka means balance. And that's why I named my company Upeka because I love it. It's a Sanskrit word for balance. And I think amazing, amazing. Yeah, so that's one. Yeah, more. Okay. I do have more. I have another surprise for you, which is okay. the paras, which is enhances the parasympathetic response. So here oh. I talked about a general breathing that you can do. Um, the equal one right now, the parasympathetic is where you inhale four and exhale eight or inhale four or exhale for longer. You could do six or eight, depending on how long your breath you can, you know, exhale. Initially, some people cannot do double from four to eight. Eventually you'll be able to do that. Uh, and that causes you to uh, increase. And I think you're, you're yawning because you know, it's a, it's actually telling you that you need to breathe better. Excellent. I'm learning. I'll be, I'll be practicing this. Trust yeah. me. This is actually, this is a perfect thing. The, the fact that you want yawn is your body telling you that you're, you need that oxygen. Good. So the parasympathetic state is so inhale one, two, three, four, exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Beautiful. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, okay. yeah, this <laughs> will relax. It's perfect to use right before going to bed if you're tossing and turning. And if you yeah. just continue to do that, you're going to drift off. And at the same time, you're thinking about breathing and not thinking about your thoughts. Okay. That's great. You have one more? I do. I okay. Do one more. And actually I have two more. Uh, I'm going to do this one, which is uh, alternate nostril breathing. This is a oh. yo yogic uh, breath. Uh, and um, it's called Anulom Vilom in Sanskrit, alternate nostril breathing. The benefits of this is to purify the channels of energy, which are called nadis in the body. This is in Chinese medicine and Ayurveda. They all talk about these energy channels. Yeah. Um, and it nourishes the whole body. It induces tranquility, helps improve concentration, increases vitality and lowers stress and anxiety. All right. So stress and anxiety. A, a, yeah. little, uh, a little more involved than just regular breathing. Uh, you can do this whenever you feel that you want to freshen up. So basically you take your fingers and you fold down these two fingers. Okay. If this is hard for you to do, you could even do this, but this is the traditional way to do this. Yeah. And if it, that's hard to hold sometimes, yeah, <laughs> so you can do that. this if you like. Okay. So basically what you're going to do is your nose actually autonomically switches from right nostril to left nostril breathing. You don't know it. So your, 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 your dominant nostril is always breathing right or left, right? I think right is the parasympathetic and left is the sympathetic or vice versa. I'm not sure. So that's very interesting to notice during the day. One side will be a little blocked and the other side will be more clear. That's normal. Okay. So this actually balances the two. Oh. So basically, um, so I will show you, I will demonstrate first how to do that. So basically you inhale, you, you block your left nostril and first you just take a breath in from both your nostrils. So, okay. And then you block your left nostril with your thumb and inhale from your sorry, block your right nostril and inhale from your left. Okay. So block your right nostril, inhale from your left and then block your left nostril with your finger, ring finger, 
open up your right nostril and exhale from your right nostril. Then you inhale from your right nostril, block your right nostril and exhale from your left. Then you inhale from your left nostril, block your left nostril and exhale from the right. Then inhale from the right nostril, block your right nostril, exhale from the left. Inhale left nostril, block your left nostril, exhale from the right. So this might seem wow. confusing, but the easy thing that I learned in the beginning was this, you always switch sides after you inhale. If okay. you learn that little trick, then you yeah. won't get confused. So basically you inhale and then you block, exhale, inhale, block, exhale, inhale, block, exhale, inhale. So the first time it's inhale and then it, then you do both inhale, exhale on both sides. Before you start the blocking. Yes. And that is called Anulom Vilom. And it has a lot of yogic benefits and it balances the two sides and makes your head clear. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Viewers, this is free yoga classes we're getting here on Ezra Wellness. Make sure, I hope you're practicing it because I am learning too. <laughs> All right, so you say you have one more? Is that I have one more. more so would, this is my favorite one. Oh. I love it so much because I actually uh, had shingles okay and um i use this every morning because the shingles affected affects your nerves it and does i was very fortunate that it didn't affect me too much but i'm sharing this with you because this humming breath um it's called humming bee breath which is brahma brahmari pranayam in in sanskrit brahmari is the type of um breath and pranayama is breath in in yoga so humming bee breath to put it simply it stimulates your vagus nerve Beautiful. so what is your vagus nerve it runs from back here and it goes into your enteric nervous system it's called the vagus nerve because it's it wanders yeah it wanders right through and it connects your uh, your brain to your gut it does and it's that's another whole topic to talk about Next but, time you come for that one, you wait. Yeah, to, I would to love to talk it. about that. Oh, yeah. But Vegas nerve. It's so okay, fascinating. So this breath is going to help to stimulate it. Yeah, so it helps increase your parasympathetic nervous system. Okay, beautiful. Which is connected to your vagus nerve. All right. So uh, the way to do this is, um, there are many ways to do this. The easy way to do this is just hum a song. So, hmm. You're actually stimulating your nervous system, your vagus nerve by humming. And I noticed my mom, after she had, my mom's 86, and she recovered from her hip surgery and her arm breaking, and I noticed she's humming all the time. And she's so cute. She walks around the house humming. And I think it's soothing her and helping her. You know, it helps okay. relax her. So humming. But the actual way, the real way to do this is basically you put your, um, I'm going to take off my, glasses to show you okay. so basically two fingers here and then you close your ears with a little lobe here so you'll be closing your two ears and you put your two fingers here and then you put your middle finger on your eye and this finger right outside your nostril so basically you're closing your eyes very gently you're pressing your touching your third eye area here, which mm -hmm. is right behind here is your pineal gland and all of that right behind here. So it's, it's very, very soothing. And then you take a deep breath in and then you hum like a buzzing bee. So I'm going to demonstrate this to you. Yeah. Okay. And so basically what I'm doing is I'm closing my ears. So I won't be able to hear if you say anything. <laughs> Oh, wait, let me breathe right. Not shallow breath, right? Mm-hmm. Um, um, 
and so wow. forth. Wow. And that resonating sound in your head, like you just open your eyes and you feel like, wow, it just balances you and creates an awesome feeling. So, so basically you, your, the, your top, this is like, so as, um, Salome, your, your, your index finger needs to go here. Okay, your middle finger covers your eye very gently and your ring finger is just outside your nostrils. Basically, you're, you're, you're kind of gently pressing on your sinuses and your thumb is closing your ears shut. And then you take that deep breath that I taught you and then exhale out with the humming sound Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> this is the, you know, thousands of your or your old wisdom that I've taught you today. Yes. Um, and I hope you can use even the simplest breath. I mean, you know, the biggest thing I could tell you is create it as a habit. Just okay. deep breathe a few times a day. Okay. And well, wow, 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 viewers, this has been amazing. I know Selma is definitely coming back to give us more free classes. <laughs> if you're watching us and you love this, that you did, you just started the deep breath and you already started feeling the effect, Selma have yoga classes online. So you could sign up wherever you are. And I'm going to put all her information underneath the video so you know exactly where to find her. But Selma, before you go, what would be your last words to our viewers? I would just say, again, reiterate what I, I keep saying that um, think about the magic of breath. Become aware of your breath is what I would say, awareness. Uh, and that would lead to start a few minutes a day taking 10 equal breaths, four, two, four, two, and see how it can change your life. All right. Thank you so much for coming to Ezra Wellness. We really, I really, really love this. I hope viewers also loved it. We are going to continue to learn and practice this and make sure that we are breathing right so that the good nutrients that we are eating, the body is going to be able to use it because you know we need the oxygen with the nutrients to create energy. Thank you once again, Selma, for coming to Ezra Wellness. And viewers, if you're new to this channel, please subscribe, share it, and let's all grow healthy together. Until I see you in the next video, remember, this is Ezra Wellness, where you learn proving way to healthy living. Thank you for your time.